Hey, welcome to my classroom. I'm Carrie Gallagher, and um, earlier today, um, an article that I wrote was published by Ed Surge, and it's called A Guide to Creating a Collaborative Learning Environment. So this is what it looks like on the Ed, Ed Surge site if you visit it. And if we click on it, you can see the article itself. Has a nice step-by-step -step guide, answers some questions, there's tons of links to resources. I was thinking though, as I was kind of rereading it once it was published, that it would be helpful for me to show what... So um, I thought I'd give you a little tour um, of what it would be to experience the class from the perspective of a student as you walk in the door. So I'm walking toward the door now, and we're gonna be really geeky and actually walk in. So as the students walk in, they um, see a QR code on the door with um, information on how to contact me, and if they scan it, they will see information for my Twitter account, um, my Voxer account, my email, lots of different ways to contact me. Once they walk in, you can see that the desks are positioned in groups of about six with flat screen TVs at each station. There are a total of four stations. This is the second one. Go to the other side of the room. This is the third, and that's the fourth. And then there's a fifth group that gets the smart board as their screen. Um, most of my classes don't actually need that fifth group, um, but I have two out of my five that are larger. And then there's a projector up there. Each of the screens has cords attached with dongles so that kids can um, connect their iPads or um, their phones to it and then display what it is that they're doing on their devices for the rest of their group. And they often switch and show, um, you know, different group members' screens. Obviously, they can play video through the TVs so that they can learn together um, and collaborate. You'll also see that at each station, there's a whiteboard surface. These surfaces were actually donated to me by 3M recently because they heard about my classroom, which was super generous of them. There's one there. For this station, there's one of the closet doors. This group gets the nice big whiteboard right there. So they can map out their ideas on the actual whiteboards and then log it into their notebooks uh, um, in Evernote. They all keep digital notebooks in Evernote. Or um, they can do their work entirely digitally and share it using the screens. Um, another thing that we do to kind of boost collaboration right from the beginning, and I actually broadcasted about this yesterday, so if you tune in then you can see it, is right when they walk in, they get to see a question of the day, which usually has absolutely nothing to do with what we're studying in class. Today's question was, what is your favorite flavor of ice cream? And you can see lots of different kids handwriting and lots of different colors with lots of answers. Um, sadly, this particular student is lactose intolerant, but maybe I'll let that student come up with tomorrow's question so that they can be sure to participate. Um, and I'd love to show you an example of how a lesson starts. I'll pull that up for you on the, on the screen. And this is what would be broadcast um, on the smart board at the beginning of class. So one of our recent lessons was about Lincoln's changing views um, of slavery starting from before the Civil War leading up to um, the very end of the Civil War and finally with the, th the 13th Amendment when the slaves were actually freed. So this is what would appear up on the smart board when they arrive in class. I'm gonna turn my screen around. They get an essential question um, that is relatively open-ended. Um, and then there's a QR code you can see right here. So as they walk in with their devices, they walk directly up to that smart board right there at the front of the room and they scan the QR code. And immediately what pops up on their screen is a list of all the resources, video clips, um, primary source documents, sec secondary source documents, interactive websites, and instructions for what they're gonna do for the rest of the class period. And oftentimes we also will share out our, our analysis. And this is what you might see appear on those TV screens. And the kids would fill it out together in their small groups. So we don't do a ton of discussion in large groups. We do it in small groups. And um, that means that I'm not actually talking to the whole class at once very often at all. I'm making my way through each group and making sure that I'm checking for understanding. Also having some side conversations with them about perhaps their favorite ice cream flavor or whatever else is going on. Um, this weekend, maybe we'll have a big production by our drama program that um, everyone's buzzing about. And so you'll, you also notice that I have a little desk in the corner 
so that my laptop is hooked up to the smart board just for the intro at the beginning of class. But otherwise, there's really no front to my classroom. There's stations all over the room. And so I've been standing most of the time that I've been broadcasting to you um, in the middle of the room. And that's kind of what I do. I walk around the middle of the room and visit each of these stations and talk to the kids. I very rarely talk to the whole class at once. It's a lot of small group discussion, one-on-one -on -one meetings with me or with one another. Um, and, and so that's what the environment looks like. Actually, my dream is to replace these little tiny desks with um, couches or, um, you know those gaming chairs that people can kind of sit on and lean back and relax, and then nice low tables so that everyone's putting their devices on the same tables and it's easier for them to share their screens and, and work with one another. Um, but I've been applying for grants every year consistently for the past couple of years. I've been lucky enough to um, have been awarded grants totaling over $10,000 just for my classroom alone. Um, that's what these TV screens are from. You know, perhaps next year I'll apply for uh, for those furniture grants. But once again, um, if you're interested in, in how these lessons work and what it is that the kids produce when they do all that collaborative work, um, I'd love for you, I'd be honored for you to check out my um, article on EdSearch today called A Guide to Creating a Collaborative Learning Environment. So thanks so much for watching and uh, talk to you again soon.